Today we're talking about laptops that are powerful as Frick, and super excited to announce that this video is sponsored by NVIDIA. You might have heard of them. They're the rock stars of GPUs, also known as graphics cards. I've actually been a fan for a while. All the way back in 2015, I bought a bunch of stocks in NVIDIA. And at the time, they were less than 20 bucks. Best investment of my life, because ever since then, they've been crushing it. This is not financial advice, by the way. You should probably never take money tips from me because I buy a new camera every single week. I think I'm about to buy another one right now because we are also doing a giveaway on this video. I started talking to NVIDIA about a month ago, right after I posted a video where I said, I use my laptop for all my simple, basic light editing, but I need a desktop for the heavy duty edits. And that's when NVIDIA came knocking and basically they were like, clearly you've never heard of what a, I forgot my line. Clearly you have no idea what radical stuff we've been working on. You haven't experienced the true power of a laptop in rock and roll without this. This is the Razer Blade 15 advanced model with the ultra UHD OLED display. And best of all, it has our NVIDIA 2080 graphics card. Sorry about your backdrop, we'll pay for that. And I regret doing this voice for this bit because I'm definitely gonna lose my voice. So here it is. This is the laptop I've been doing all my editing on for the last couple weeks and it's been awesome. Whenever I was shopping for a computer, one of the issues I would always have is figuring out what exactly do I need and what don't I need and personally all I care about is being able to get footage shot downloaded cut color graded a few effects maybe rendered out uploaded and nap time all that as fast as possible most importantly that that nap part but after some long talks with the super smart people at Nvidia they did a great job breaking it down and simplifying it for me so let me share my knowledge with you now they know it could be complicated because they develop all kinds of stuff for robots artificial intelligence self-driving cars you name it and the needs for everybody is going to be pretty different. So for us creative specifically, they created the NVIDIA Studio lineup, which gives us a very well-balanced but powerful system that gives us full functionality of the software we use most. And out of habit, if I'm editing on a laptop, I go straight to here and I drop the resolution to pretty much as low as it can go. Now at this resolution, the picture quality looks pretty blurry, but at least it doesn't freeze up like this. Like imagine just editing footage that's this choppy for hours and hours. It would drive you nuts. You would want to jump off a cliff. And I was like, okay, let me edit this and see how long this will take before I get infuriated at the choppiness. And actually I was able to edit the whole thing in full resolution. Even the more complex stuff like this, which is a 4K video with a color grade and then a few layers. And there's another inserted 4K frame inside of here. Again, full resolution playing back to 4k videos on top of each other zero drop frames if you see that green dot right there that means literally every single frame in the video has been played properly this isn't pre-rendered or anything this is literally processing the color grade and overlaying all this stuff just on the fly this is great i was so sure that at some point i was gonna have to at least drop it into half resolution because even half resolution is fine We're recording 4k so half of that is still like a pretty close to full hd screen so that's not not a problem but what was really dope is rendering it out i rendered out a 12 and a half minute video in just over nine minutes with effects and everything which is crazy because it's faster to render out a 4k video than to watch it back i mean that's i yeah. So what exactly is going on under the hood to make this so powerful? Well, first of all, we have our i7 processor, which has six cores. And then we also have our GPU, which is the NVIDIA RTX 2080. And that has 2,944 cores. So the way they work or the micro architecture is how the smart people like to say it, but basically they work very differently. The way I like to look at it, I think of the CPU as like a sports car. All right, and then I look at a GPU like a train. So let's say I got a package about this big and I need to deliver it to San Francisco, right? I'm gonna throw it in the sports car and just But let's say you have like 2000 boxes that you have to get over to San Francisco. That's so many trips. You can only fit like 15 at a time and you have to go back and forth and back and forth opposed to a GPU or a train. So sure the train is gonna take maybe double the amount of time to get there, but you can take everything all at once. So a lot of times it makes sense to use your CPU 
or sports car to just kind of get there fast. And sometimes you need to get that freight train and just load it up and just go do this big old task. But really what it takes to turbo boost my experience is a good balance between putting certain tasks to the CPU and certain tasks to the GPU. And it's like a perfect little marriage when a couple is happy, this is the most powerful. So that's the beauty of the NVIDIA Studio lineup is that they all have a really well balanced system that are very well compatible with each other. It's really over the last five to 10 years where the power of the GPU has really become realized and utilized. Cause you know, back then it was all about having a fast CPU, have some RAM, have some hard drive space and try not to melt the computer along the way. But now by utilizing some of the tasks to the GPU, it doesn't bottleneck your main processor and it just gives us a very fluid experience. A good example is color grading for Lumetri. If you think about it, every time you make an adjustment to a shot, it's millions of calculations that need to take place to adjust the millions of pixels, right? Perfect example of what a GPU is useful for. So obviously we've seen that this is super smooth, but you can actually turn off the GPU acceleration. Right now we're using all this super powered acceleration, but if we go to software only, now we're not utilizing the power that's available to us from the GPU. And this is how it used to be. Remember having a color grade and you have to render everything. If I try to play back, look at this. Oh my God, it's, this is terrible. This is terrible. If we didn't have this GPU in here, this is literally what we would be working with. So that's when we have to take it and drop it to eighth resolution. Is that, does that even work at eighth resolution? This is, oh God. Okay, at eighth resolution, it looks blurry and it's still skipping a couple of frames here. Because of how fluid this is, just working off the straight 4K files with zero dropped frames, I don't have to take any extra steps like making proxies and all that stuff. I'm a YouTuber, I just try to get my videos out there as fast as possible. This is super easy. You just cut the 4K, render, upload, done. But let's go into some professional workflows. I shot some 5K footage on the red. Let's drop it in. I added a little bit of color grading and it generally even at full resolution this is 5k 24 frames per second it's playing fine i added a little lumetri color grade on here just to make it look and look see that zero frames drop but with this kind of footage i definitely don't recommend actually using full resolution because 5k that's more pixels than this display can even show you can't even perceive the difference right so i'd at least go down to half or even a quarter and to me i can't even tell the difference between a quarter and full resolution because of how sharp these red cameras are. So remember this is red raw footage with a color grade applied to it and it is very seamlessly gliding through it all. So I love that. How long do you think it'll take to render out 5K red footage into 5K ProRes color graded 422HQ? Sorry if that's a lot of technical words, but I'm really curious. Time-lapse mode, let's go. While we wait for this to wrap up, let's talk about this giveaway real quick. Canon M6 Mark II, really impressive camera. That's what my last video was all about. This is going out to a lucky winner in the notification squad. So just drop a comment within the first 10 hours of this video going live. And one of you will get this in the mail. You get some awesome footage with it, 4K, it's super sharp. And if you have a graphics card like this, then you'll be able to edit it, no problem. And it's done, 11 minutes and seven seconds. We're talking about some heavy, dense, professional codecs and five minutes of a color graded render out in 11 minutes. Like the days of waiting hours and hours for a professional render to get kicked out is it's over. Yes, <laughs> oh, the file's 37 gigabytes that it made, but wow. Now here's some more sample footage out of a uh, Airy Alexa, another super professional camera playing back out full resolution, zero dropped frames and the responsiveness is Fantastic. 4K footage out of the DJI Mavic drone, no issues here. This is when I ate it on the motorcycle, <laughs> you see that? Anyways, let's, uh, let's not show that. Finally, let's get into 8K footage. This is red raw 8K footage. I don't even have 8K footage because my red only shoots 5K. <laughs> but just like the 5K, it doesn't really make sense to preview and edit in full resolution because 8K, that is so many pixels. Like literally I could drop it down to 
quarter resolution and to my eye that looks perfectly sharp crystal clear in full screen i mean that's just how many pixels 8k is <laughs> it looks nice and sharp and it's responsive and it's playing back without any drop frames let's try to blow up this computer and actually there's like a little marker here in the effects panel this is accelerated effects so an effect like sharpen that's a gpu accelerated effect so let's drop that in i'll add a little bit of sharpening a little bit of lumetri color grading on this clip Ooh, looking nice oh my god even with these effects applied it's playing back without dropping frames again we are at quarter resolution but you could edit 8k footage on this thing i'm gonna leave these effects on here and i'm gonna put it up to full resolution and i'm just gonna play it back it does still play somewhat but it does hiccup a lot and does lock up quite a bit again you would never need a playback at this resolution but what's interesting is nvidia told me that this actually isn't a hardware limitation the thing is the gpu is only useful if the software running it utilizes the gpu and nvidia is working very closely with all the top dogs in software like da vinci and adobe and all these people to help enable using more gpu acceleration but a good example is red cine x in their latest update they've enabled heavy gpu acceleration and here watch this this is without gpu acceleration if you try to play back an 8k clip at full resolution it's just it's just absolutely terrible imagine trying to edit a video where every second it just pauses it plays pauses plays and then loads like this would drive you nuts we're gonna pop on gpu acceleration and oh playing back full 8k resolution so this really shows the capability of what this hardware is capable of we're just kind of waiting for the software to utilize it more and once they do that like this is going to be unstoppable so thanks again nvidia for sponsoring this episode and schooling me on all this technical knowledge i've been a big fan for a long time obviously so it's awesome to be collaborating with them you want to know something crazy i've been using this laptop for the last few weeks and i just realized it's a touch screen? What? I've just been trained to never touch the screen, but yesterday I accidentally bumped it and I noticed I clicked on something and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Make sure you hit that link down there in the description where you can see the whole NVIDIA Studio lineup. Not only did they do a great job collaborating with Razer, but other brands as well. Anyways, let's wrap this up by reading a few comments from my last video, which was all about this camera, the Canon M6 Mark II, a surprisingly powerful camera and possibly a great option for YouTubers and vloggers. Top comment from Ryan. And Garcia. Potato sack. The fact that I'm seeing Gene with Peter now makes me such a proud subscriber. They grow up so fast. Yeah, how unreal is that? I still remember when I was just starting the channel, I would always watch Maddie and Peter's video and I would have just never guessed that I would ever have a chance to meet them. And now like Maddie came to visit me a week ago and we're going to go to Hawaii next month. And then this week, Peter comes to visit and we get to hang out. Like sometimes I still feel like I'm just going to wake up from a dream and just be like, oh man, I, I got to get back to sleep. Sebastian says, I love the fact that my comments are almost always appearing on the the screen but i actually never read well congratulations sebastian you gotta read your comment and not only that i'm gonna stalk you for a second wait are, are you a subscriber you're not even subscribed to my channel bro sebastian key seal you better you better subscribe tell you what i'll trade you a heart for a subscribe good deal gene is hitting puberty with that deep voice okay literally the last video and this video my voice has been kind of messed up literally from that little rock and roll segment i wasn't kidding i actually lost my voice from that like literally if i just shout once like that i lose my voice which makes me wonder we just went to a haunted house and literally there's people hired there that just sit in like a little cabinet and they just go bah! Bah! How do you not lose your voice after the first hour of your shift? <laughs>